There are two main methods of interacting with AutoCAD, the mouse and the keyboard. Many users will use the mouse almost exclusively, using the keyboard only when it's unavoidable. However, the key to efficiency in AutoCAD is to take advantage of as many tools as you possibly can, and that includes the keyboard. If you look at the bottom middle of your screen, you will see a gray area, one line like this. And as you move the mouse over the top of it, move your crosshairs, it will highlight. This is the command line. Even if you don't use keyboard input, you are going to use the command line. AutoCAD will give you instructions on what to do next while using each of your commands, and those instructions will be brought to you by the command line. In the command line is where you type in your commands. In these videos, I will often say, type on the command line. When I say that, this is where you would type. Come down here, you can click in it, you'll see your cursor blinking, and you will type in a command. And as you saw, when I started typing, it popped up right by the cursor. That's called the dynamic input. As I move the cursor around here with my line command, it's asking me to specify the first point of my line. And it tells me that here on the command line. And here is also the icon for it. So as I pick my first point, now you can see down here in the bottom, it says specify next point or undo. You can enter in commands there. You can get information about your current commands and you can access a lot of other things. So not only can you execute commands through the command line, but AutoCAD will give you feedback through it. So keep that in mind. Many commands have options to them. Those options will appear in the command line. So there, I just drew my first line. Now to exit out of a command, press the enter key or the escape key. So that's to help get it out of your way. Now you can do a lot of things to the command line. You can left click in these little boxes here or really anywhere, but clicking in different places does different things. If I click on these little bars here on the left, so I click and hold and I drag it, put it to where I want. Now you see these little arrows? As I move the cursor to you know, the top or the bottom or even to the sides of the command line, it gives me these little arrows. When I move it to the corner, it's at a diagonal. Now I can stretch my command line, making it larger, more narrow, wider, however you want it to be displayed. I can click it and pop it back into place if I want. Now it used to be the command line was always three lines and you couldn't really change it, but you can set it however you'd like. By default or out of the box, it comes looking like this. So if we start something like the circle command, just start typing in the word circle, C-I-R-C-L-E. And you'll notice I typed it incorrectly. That's okay. The command line has an autocorrect feature so it gives you some different ideas. So if I click on the circle command, I can start drawing a circle. And remember earlier I said that the command line will give you some instructions. Well, it tells you here to specify center point for circle, or I have these different options. And through these different options, I can draw a circle in a different way. Right now, by default, the circle command asks you for a center point for your circle. Just left click there and drag your mouse out somewhere else and that is giving it a radius. Or do you want to give it a diameter? I can come down to the command line, click on the diameter option, and now I'm drawing a circle by diameter. So if I click again, there's my circle. So now you've drawn a line in a circle. So your command line gives you a lot of information and it's interactive. And if you type it in incorrectly, you have things like autocorrect. You also have other things like autocomplete. So if I start typing in C for circle, I get a list here of different options of commands that start with the letter C. I can scroll down right here and keep looking. I can even go to the command and on some of them get a little pop-up, get some information and say, oh, hey, what is that? I'm not sure. If I press F1, now I'm going to be taken to the help command, which will open up help on the circle command. So you can get to a lot of different things right from your command line. As I start typing it in, even more, it auto-corrects. It fills everything back in, and it tells me what I want to do. Now, the command line is very intelligent. It keeps track of the commands that you use. And so if you use certain commands more often, then it will start to automatically fill in those commands ahead of the ones you normally don't use. AutoCAD is smart enough to customize itself to fit to your needs and to the way you use the command line. So in the command line, some of its really cool features is the autocorrect, the autocomplete, and adaptive suggestions. Now, these are the ones that I was just talking about. These are the commands you typically use that start with the letter C. So it starts populating that list with those. 
the command line has a built-in synonym list. It will return to you a list that might be a synonym of the command. So for example, if you enter in the word symbol, you start typing it in, it says insert, meaning you want to insert a block or a symbol. So if you're not familiar with all of the exact terminology and jargon that AutoCAD uses, you might find this helpful. You'll know when it's a synonym when it's in parentheses. What you're typing in is on the left, and the actual command AutoCAD believes you're talking about will be in parentheses. Another thing you might want to do, let's say that you have two lines, and you want this corner here to be round. Okay, so let's type in the word round. Now, RO is rotate, and round is a synonym for fillet. So if I click fillet, and I give it a radius distance of let's say one, and then I can click on my edges, and you can see it makes that little round corner. So that's a nice little thing that you're probably going to find very useful as you learn AutoCAD. Other things that you can do with the command line you will see here is by getting your command history, if you click on this arrow, or if you press the F2 key, that will pop up this list. And when the list is up here, you can select the different items that are in here, you right click and copy it out. So if you do some things in AutoCAD that provides you with a list of information here that you need for a report or for an email, you can do that. For example, if I use the list command to give me information on this line, and I press enter, that will pop up my command history here and give me information on this line. See, it tells me it's a line, what layer it's on, gives me length and angle information. So if I need that information about an object, I can come in here, select it, right click and hit copy. I can go and paste it somewhere to use later on. And well, that's really cool. Now you have other options here as well. If I click on this button, it brings up a list of the latest commands that I've used and you can go back to it. And you can change some of your settings by clicking on this little wrench and you have your input settings right here and you can turn all this stuff off or on. You can even change the delay time for when things pop up or not. Now you can change the lines of prompt history you can even input search options. So if I click here, I can say what I want to look for. So if I wanna look for a hatch pattern, I can do that. If I wanna look for a specific block inside my file, I can do that. And we'll talk later about what these things are, blocks and hatches, etc. But you can do a search of objects inside your drawing just by typing them in the command line. There's a second form of the command line, and I mentioned it earlier. It's called the dynamic input. This dynamic input is a visual aid that's intended to help the drafter's efficiency. It puts the command line at your crosshair so that you don't have to keep moving your eyes from crosshair to the command line and back again. This way, it will help you to concentrate on what you're drawing. So if I'm drawing on this line, I want to keep my focus on this line. I don't want to have to divert my eyes down to the command line and back up again to know what's going on. So the dynamic input can help with that. So if you're a good typist, then you can type the word circle without looking at your keys or your fingers and just type it in and see that it's been typed in correctly on the command line. Press enter and draw a circle. You can turn the dynamic tools off and on by coming down to this little status bar. There are a lot of different things that you're going to see here that we're going to use. This is it right here, dynamic input. It's turned on right now and I can tell because it's blue. See these boxes here, they're gray. Those features are turned off. But if I left click on it, it turns it off. So now when I type in the word line, this pops up here on the command line. And I get a lot of different things here. I get the different commands and I can do searches for them. Here I can do a search in the help so I can learn more about the dim linear command. Or I can do a search here on the internet for it. So you can get right to the internet search. If you're trying to figure out how to use something, you can get to it right here. It will open up your default browser and show you a different list of things that you can use. Now here at the bottom are some different settings. So if you have a linear brightness setting or a hatch pattern setting, you can get to those. And if you click on the plus signs, it will bring them up as well. Or click it again to bring it down and you can scroll. Now a lot of users prefer this way. They don't like the dynamic input because they feel it gets in the way of the drawing. Another way to enter commands on the command line is through keyboard shortcuts. All commands can be executed by typing on the command line but most commands have a keyboard shortcut. So for example, the circle command, you can type out the word circle, or you can just type in the letter C. That will also start the circle command. Press enter or right click, 
and draw your circle. That saves you a lot of time. It also saves you from coming up to the ribbon, finding the circle command, clicking on it, and starting it. It's nice if I'm in, let's say, the annotate tab, and I'm dimensioning my drawing. And I say, oh, wait a minute, I needed to draw a circle here. Well, I could stop what I'm doing, go back to the home tab, go to the circle, and then go back to the annotate tab, or I can just stay where I'm at, hit the letter C, press enter, and draw my other circle. That can help you to work more efficiently. So you're using your mouse and you're using your keyboard. Now those little shortcuts there are called command aliases. It's just an alias that you can use for a command. Now last tip, if you press the up and down arrow keys, this will toggle you through commands that you've entered. The up command goes up the list, the down command goes down the list. So if you want to find very quickly a couple of commands or just go back from one of the last couple of commands you've done, you can do that very quickly and get to what you want. And again, if it's the wrong one, press the escape key and you're out of there.